Given this function f of n, defined by when we use 1, we get 2, and when we use a bigger number, we use a previous number to help us out, what could represent the range of the function? Well, when we use the x value of 1, we definitely get 2. So we find that is one of our answers there and there. Maybe c and d have 2 in it that we're just not seeing. Hmm. It's pretty doubtful. However, what would happen if we use, you know, how about f of 2? So f of 2, we're using n is 2. So we would calculate that with 5 times f of 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is the number 1. So what is f of 1? f of 1 is 2. So we have negative 5 times f of 1 being 2, and then we add 2. So we'd have negative 10 plus 2, or negative 8. So f of 2 is negative 8. Now we already see that, and here is choice B. So that's our winner. In fact, we don't see a negative 8 anywhere in choice A, so it looks like we can you know, not only get rid of those first two, but now A as well. For the bottom problem, Morgan throws a ball in the air, and what goes up must come down. And the height of the ball doo -doo 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 -doo, above the ground is given by the following function, h of t, so the height at time t, is given by this cute little formula, where t represents the time in seconds since the ball was thrown. Well, what would be the appropriate domain for this situation? In other words, what is the appropriate horizontal distance for this to make sense? So, we're going to think of Morgan throwing the ball at time zero. So, the time is zero here. So, how long before the ball hits the ground at the end of the curve? Well, one of the simplest ways to think about it is our height is actually going to start at a height of zero and then increase to some pretty big height. And then it's going to go back down to a height of zero. So when will our function equal zero for that second time? So let's set it up. Here's our height function. And we're wondering, when is it equal to zero? So let's pretend that it is equal to zero and set it equal to zero. Well, we could factor out t, leaving negative 16 and then one less than two, t, um, and here plus 24. So to make that zero, we could have the time being zero. Oh, we already knew that. We already knew the time equals zero works. Or we could have this uh, left hand piece being zero. So how do we get this left hand piece to be zero? Well, we would have 24 would be the same as positive 16t. Okay, so when does 16t equal 24? Well, dividing by 16, it's when t is 24 divided by 16. So why don't we do a calculator? So 24 divided by 16, And we get, whoa, let's retry that. 24 divided by 16, and we get a grand total of one and a half. So 1.5, making choice A the winner. So 1.5 was the mystery value, and it's choice A. Nine is too big. Um, 
D doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And then is it really not C? So we want our time to be between 0 and 1.5 seconds. We don't want the height to be between 0 and 1.5. In fact, I would guess that it actually goes pretty high, as balls tend to do. The end.